Hello, this is Event Pro 360 President and Co-Founder Danny Rainbow. I'm here today in this video to share with you the details of our new menu feature uh, launching January 13th and 14th of 2019. Uh, first thing to keep in mind here, if you're an existing user of Event Pro 360, there's no requirement for you to use this feature. This is just uh, an option that we created based on uh, user feedback as well as uh, our own experience and uh, opinion on what might make the system a little bit more user-friendly and, and uh, more usable when it comes to the selecting of a menu for an event and having all those menu items and their charges recorded more easily and flow to the right places in your system. Uh, so we're going to jump right into it here. Uh, this event that we're looking at is a birthday party. Um, so we're going to run through two different examples of what uh, the menu feature might look like when uh, selecting a menu for this birthday party. So again, this video is, is going to be primarily focused on the uh, post setup sides. This is after you've set up your menu in the system. This can kind of give you an idea of how it will look when actually using that menu. Um, so at the bottom of the event page here we've got a new section called menu and you can have as many menus as you want in here. Um, in this example we set them up by year. We have a 2019 and 2020 menu in here so that we can uh, go in and select uh, menu options for events taking place in different years. If I expand this 2019 menu which is the one we'll work off uh, in this example you can see I have a variety of menu categories and each of these categories uh, that has the little triangle by it means that it contains items within it so uh, you can color code these and set them up in different ways of course this is all customizable uh, like other fields in Event Pro 360 you can create your own names and items within them and colors and everything uh, but let's just say uh, for this example that they're gonna do a uh, lunch buffet for this birthday party and you can see once I expand the section it gives me my menu items I'm just gonna select the picnic lunch here and what you'll notice is as soon as I clicked on picnic lunch a modifier selections window opens up for me uh, this means there are some choices to be made with this menu item um, so here's when I'm gonna go ahead and make those choices uh, so this one has been set up on the back end uh, to require two meat selections. So there you can see there are three options and I need to choose two of those. So let's just say this event is going to go with the chicken breast and the bratwurst. And then for the potato or pasta salad, let's go with the potato salad for it. Now a few other things to point out here on the modifier selections window. Uh, you are able to have an upcharge for certain items. Uh, so if you wanted to pre-program in that the chicken is an additional dollar per guest or something like that, you can have that uh, preset so that that automatically pops in when you select the chicken um, or you can indicate it right here on the event page you could just type that in that it's an extra dollar uh, per guest for that one uh, the other thing you can do is allow extra choices so if this event said well I'd really like to have all three of these or, but our menu price only includes the two um, you could say well okay for an extra uh, three dollars will allow the extra choice uh, to take place um, and again this can be pre-programmed on the back end to allow this but you could also be changed on the fly as you're working with the event here so uh, we'll say in this example that it's three dollars for an extra choice and we'll add the hamburgers and now it's allowed us to make all three selections okay so we'll just undo that for right now we've got just the two and the other option you're seeing is the ability to add custom choices um, so if we wanted to have a meat selection maybe that's not on our standard menu and we wanted to do let's just say we're gonna do a steak uh, for another option here I can just type that in right on the fly custom selection for steak and maybe we are gonna do an upcharge for that one we'll say it's an extra four dollars per guest to to offer steak and then we'll uncheck the bratwurst so they've got their two selections chicken and the the steak which was an upcharge and we'll hit done and now we see that uh, we've got our picnic lunch in here. The price per guest is showing up. Uh, the pre-programmed description, which is uh, programmed on the back end of the system. And then uh, we've also got the uh, modifiers here that we selected um, showing up. And if I want to change those modifiers, I can simply click on that button. And if we need to, maybe they decide to go away from the steak and back to just a burger instead, so there's no upcharge. Uh, now we've got that all set for him as well. Uh, we can select the time that this is going to take place. So this is a lunch buffet. So maybe we're going to say it's going to run from noon until 1 p.m. You can do it that way. Or if you just want to say it starts at noon and there's not really a designated end time, you can do it just like this. So now we've got the uh, the noon lunch showing. 
Okay, so when the menu is selected, I click the Save button. And now the great thing about the menu feature is that it allows you to select for each menu item uh, what other sections that detail flows to. Uh, so if you're a user of the system already, you're familiar with sections like the beverage service, food details, setup sections here, um, summary of charges, of course. We can have menu items that are selected show up in those other sections. So now I'll go to summary of charges, and you notice that the picnic lunch that I selected uh, down below has automatically showed up here. Um, I don't have to set this picnic lunch item up in my summary of charges. I don't have to do anything with that. It's just when I'm setting up the menu item on my manage settings page, I just check a box saying that I want it to go to the summary of charges, and here it shows up in my summary of charges. Okay, and you see it's got the time and everything listed. Uh, I can also go to the food details section and see that here my picnic lunch has also uh, flowed over to my food details section. So. Uh, so you can see a few different ways of uh, displaying this information, and it really just kind of depends what type of printout you want. The food details uh, section will be good for doing a printout of just the menu, sort of a timeline view of the menu without any charges in it. Uh, summary of charges obviously gives you the full full view of the, of the cost arrangement and everything. All right, so that was the more uh, simplified example. Uh, next, we'll run through a slightly more detailed scenario. So if I just uncheck... Uh, that picnic lunch, and let's say we're going to select a completely different menu for this event. Let's just run through maybe a uh, dinner example instead. Uh, let's just say we wanted to start selecting some items here. Um, one other thing to point out before we select the dinner items is that uh, this feature is not limited to food and beverage items only. It's uh, You can certainly have things like room rental and AV services. Uh, so let's just say for this little bit more involved example that we're going to be charging a room rental. Uh, my standard atrium room rental is in here at $1,000 uh, per event. Let's, we'll go with that. And let's say this there's a presentation, so there's a little bit more detailed of an AV setup. You can see I've got my AV options all programmed into my menu feature here. So uh, let's just say they're going to rent a projection screen from us. Uh, we've got some audio equipment to rent as well. We're going to rent an audio mixer for them and then they're hiring us to have a uh, one of our technicians run the uh, the presentation for them so we're going to put in about say three hours for that okay so we've got those items uh, all taken care of uh, now we'll get to some of the dinner items so let's just say we're gonna plug in a couple of appetizers here they're gonna have some warm appetizers maybe a stuffed mushrooms you can see this is set up at uh, $150 uh, per event, um, and we have three different types of stuffed mushrooms. So let's say we wanted to do a couple of these. We want to do the bacon and blue cheese, and we also want to do the sun-dried tomato and spinach. I'd go ahead and select the bacon and blue cheese, and I'd say how many of those I wanted. Let's say they wanted two trays of that. And then you see next to it here, uh, <clears throat> by the stuffed mushrooms item, there's a plus button. So I can click that plus button and I now have another stuffed mushrooms uh, line that has showed up down below and I can select the sun-dried tomato and spinach stuffed mushrooms and we'll say just one tray of those okay so we've got uh, those two items showing up here let's go ahead and select the times for those we'll say that these are coming out at uh, 5 p.m. for both Okay, just use our time sliders to get that set. All right, so our uh, appetizers are set for 5 p.m. And then let's say this is a plated dinner event. Um, one nice uh, feature of the menu feature is that uh, within a category like plated dinners, we can click a box on the manage settings pane that allows us to uh, total up these items and make sure it matches the guest count. Okay, so what I mean by that is if I scroll up here, you can see my guest count for the event is 100. And I've checked a box uh, on the back end on settings to make sure that plated dinners need to add up to 100. So the system now knows that. Um, I'm going to click on the pork tenderloin here. And we'll get back to that 100 guest count in a moment here. But uh, as you can see, this is an item with uh, a little bit more detail when it comes to the modifier selections. So I've got uh, my plated dinner salad selections to make. So we have three salad options 
we'll go ahead and select this artichoke and mushroom salad. Uh, you'll notice in the description it comes standard with an Italian vinaigrette, but uh, I have alternate salad dressings programmed as, as an additional modifier here. So this is a modifier of a modifier, essentially. Uh, and you can have as many levels deep of modifiers as you'd like to, uh, so you can really get detailed on, on these items. But let's just say we're going to replace the Italian with a, a balsamic instead for this item. We can then select the uh, potato and starch selection. We'll just go with the roasted fingerling potatoes. And then we can do a dessert selection as well. Triple chocolate cake. All right, so now that we've uh, selected uh, our details for the pork tenderloin, um, you can see that we have this guest count uh, note popping up here that the total is not equal to 100. So I need to put in how many of these are being selected. Let's just say 43 guests uh, have selected the pork tenderloin. Um, that, it's still showing me that that's not equal to the 100. So we're gonna go ahead and select the other entree. Um, maybe we did the flat iron steak for the uh, second entree here. And again, we get that full selection. So with this entree, maybe it comes with a, uh, a different salad. Okay, and uh, that, we'll just leave the standard dressing on that one. We won't select a different dressing. Uh, maybe this one comes with the wild rice pilaf and then a different uh, dessert as well. Okay, so those selections have all been made. Uh, alternate salad dressing, it's gonna say TBD, but I didn't, didn't make a selection on that, so that's all right. I can go always go back in there and change that if I want to. And uh, since we had 43 guests uh, selecting the other entree, we'll say that 57 selected this one. And now you can see our notification here has gone away. Um, we've got these numbers adding up to 100. If I were to go in and make a change to this and only 42 guests wanted that one, now I've got this note back and prompting me that I need to change a number somewhere. So this must have gone up to 58 then, and now we're back, back to where we want to be. All right, so we can uh, select the time uh, at which these, these items should start. So I can say that we're going to start the dinner service, uh, which includes you know the salad and entree and everything. We had our appetizers at uh, 5 p.m., so we can say this next whole portion of the dinner uh, is going to begin at 6 p.m. Okay. So we'll set the same time for the other entree. All right, and if I need to more, n make more detailed notes about time for these different items, I can always utilize the uh, description here. You can type into the description, and if I need to detail out even further what time each of these items comes out, um, you can always type whatever you want to into the uh, item description whatever notes you'd like. Okay, so now all of these selections have been made. I'm gonna go down to the bottom here, save that, and just like we showed in the previous example, uh, this information will all flow uh, to the proper sections. Uh, so we've got the summary of charges is gonna include uh, everything that I just selected. So that'll be the first one I'll open up here just to show you uh, the room rental, and the AV services, and the, and the menu items all here on the summary of charges. And you can see that everything has come into the, the right sections. I had different sections set up on my summary of charges for room rental and for food and for AV equipment. And you can see that the food items uh, are in order of their time um, that I selected. Okay, and their notes are all showing up in there. And our AV equipment uh, is here as well. And everything's being totaled up for us at the bottom. Uh, food details section is obviously going to include the, all the food items. Okay, and then the setup section is going to have some of that room rental and uh, AV equipment in it as well. All right, so that gives you a bit of an overview of how this menu feature can work and, and produce uh, the menu for an event and, and other items that can be selected for an event. And, uh, of course, these can all flow to your event documents as well. Um, in a separate video here, we're going to detail the uh, setup on the Manage Settings page to get this all to work as I've shown in this video. Thanks for your time.